What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a whole variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing a episode from Soma Spider, So What? If you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you want to help the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Links to those will be in the description. So we are reviewing episode 16 of Soma Spider, So What? Am I getting ahead of myself? And there are a lot of stuff we want to talk about. This episode gave us a lot of information, but first, let us celebrate that Kumoko was able to evolve. She evolved to a Zana Horoha. Z-A-N-A-H-O-R-O-W-A. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. I'm going to have to listen to the anime again to like just hear how they said it. But I'm going to just like read it off. <laughs> Kumoko evolved because she defeated one of her siblings, ate them and such. And with this evolution, she got some skills and titles. Now there's one skill that I am curious about is called instant body. What does that mean? Like why instant body? Is it instant body because another thing that Kumoko got was immortality. Is the immortality with the instant body? I don't know. It, it makes sense that they're together. Another title she got was champion. And champion is be recognized as a champion upon visual contact. Inflict the fear heresy effect on others title bestowed on those worthy of being called champions and after Kumoko saw that she got that title that's when Administrator D showed up Administrator D showed up again and you know what she just threw us a bunch of information Administrator D explained why Kumoko and her classmates died why they were reincarnated into this world and why they have cheat skills and I looked up why they died and why they were reincarnated into this world, but I didn't get the details. And then Minister D was able to give me the details. And you know what the details is? The details was the previous hero and demon lord were prodigious masters of dimensional magic. Yes, I'm reading this off from the anime. The two of them were prodigious masters of dimensional magic and created magic that let them escape the boundary of this world. If they could escape the boundary of that world does that mean they were jumping worlds were they in kumoko's previous world were they hanging out over there is that why kumoko's work got affected by whatever happened but i'm going off topic here anyways administrator d said that the demon lord and the hero's dimensional magic could not be controlled within the system support that administrator d made and what happened was that magic went out of control and affected Moko's class in Japan and we're wondering okay why that classroom and administrator D somewhere along the line of her explanation is saying that she created the system and she was in the classroom you know how we learned that she was in the classroom because she said that 25 of the people in the classroom were killed and reincarnated into this world and administrator D felt bad that they died so she reincarnated them and she gave them skills cheat skills that would help them in this world and they were all reincarnated to races that resonated with their soul so Kamoko's like wait 25 shouldn't it be 26 if the teacher is included and the administrator d says oh i say 25 because i was there administrator d was in the classroom so that means that that classroom got affected because administrator d was in there then administrator d says that there's a faction that is trying to destroy her and so the demon lord and the hero were being manipulated now we have a third faction my next question is when are we going to encounter this third faction we got the demons we got the humans Where's the third one? Who's the third one? Is the third faction manipulating the humans? Or is the third faction manipulating the demons? I don't think the third faction is manipulating the demons because in Shun's time, we see that the other administrator, the G, the G dude, the one that's with the demon lord, he's there. So if the administrator is there, that means that the third faction can't be there, right? Because the third faction is trying to go after the administrators. Let me know if you think 
this is correct or if this is wrong or if you got a different theory. So after that scene with Administrator D blowing our minds with this information, the scene changes to Shum and we see Faye, she evolved and she got this skill of humanification and she's got a humanoid form and the reincarnated people in Shun's party all commented that Faye's human form resembles what she looked like in the previous world. Now, I think that's fair because Faye was reincarnated in a monster's body, so if she's gonna get a human form, she might as well get something that she likes. Now, the way Faye looks reminded Shun that they are all reincarnated people, and this led to them talking about those who were reincarnated, and Oka Sensei thought of a list and show a list of all the students and I'm wondering which one is Administrator D on this list. And while Shun's party was on the topic about people being reincarnated, Faye pointed something out. She pointed out that the hero is a reincarnated person. So she asked, is the demon lord a reincarnated person? And you know what Oko Sensei said? I don't know. And she had such a mischievous look. Like, you know she knows, but she doesn't want to say. The next part of the episode I want to talk about is the Demon Lord's appearance, okay? So in Komoko's time, we see the Demon Lord for the first time. Every time when we saw the Demon Lord, it was in Shun's time. But now, we're seeing the Demon Lord 15 years ago. And you know what? The Demon Lord is apparently the origin heretic and she has a name her name is ariel she has a pretty name who named her and this episode showed us her stats bruh her stats are insane she's got a bunch of level 10s she has so many skills but her titles her titles so we got human slayer human slaughterer human calamity demon slayer demon slaughterer demon calamity fairy slayer fairy slaughterer Fairy Calamity, Monster Slayer, Monster Slaughter, Monster Calamity, and so much so more. And we got Ancient Divine Beast, Ruler of Gluttony, and Demon Lord. Rawr! I am curious about the fairy part. I'm like wondering, okay, who, where are the fairies? Who are the fairies? Have we seen the fairies yet? And the other thing was Ancient Divine Beast. I'm like, what makes her a ancient divine beast? Why is she a ancient divine beast? What does that mean? Does what? <laughs> Anyways, before the demon lord showed up, one of Komoko's parallel minds contacted Komoko, and they tell her that Mother was not the one in charge. Mother was not the top of the food chain. There was someone else. And after that was mentioned, the demon lord showed up. So that means the demon lord was controlling mother. So that means the demon lord was kind of controlling Komoko. But Komoko's like, nah, -uh, nope, 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 no one can control me. Nope, I will block you. And so the demon lord showed up and she goes after Komoko and she like destroys her body. But Komoko is immortal. She has the immortality. So at the end of the scene, we see Komoko's head flying off. I'm like, what? Bruh. Since we're on the topic of immortality, I went to look at the Demon Lord's stats and I did not see immortality in her stats. So I'm wondering, is that because the Demon Lord is supposed to be killed off? And I'm kind of glad she's not immortal because it's like, damn. If the hero is meant to defeat you, that's really unfair if the demon lord was immortal. You know what I mean? Now there is an explanation to the immortality part. There's a reason why Komoko is immortal. And thanks to which Skyrocket, who commented in the reaction of episode 16, we know why. And it's because Komoko evolved to certain species that had rot attack. And usually species that use rot attack, they hurt themselves, right? But Komoko got the rot resistance. So she survived those rot attacks that she was using. So after she evolved to Zanharoha, immortality is a sort of reward for making it, for surviving, for not killing herself. You know what? If you survive this, you might as well be immortal. Back to talking about the episode, it ended with the demon lord destroying Komoko's body. If we remember, the opening scene of the series has Komoko and the demon lord 
fighting. I think the next episode is going to have Komoko and the Demon Lord fighting each other. The thing is, Komoko's immortal, so where is this fight going to lead to? Is the Demon Lord going to try bring Komoko onto her side? Is she trying? Is she going to like try to take her in? Like, what's going to happen? I don't know, but I'm excited for it. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen in the next episode. And that's my review of Soma Spider. So what? Episode 16. What did you guys think about the episode? What did you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there is a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do stop by the stream. Have that one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I also host Podcast Across Worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is available in the description. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this was a Superfina channel reviewing Soma Spider So What episode 16. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.